Today we have a build that's been in the making for a long while. So yeah, just getting this stuff out of the way first, this is like a two year long project with many troubles getting this out to people because of a range of manufacturing issues and whatnot. And yeah, that's the risk we group by sometimes where unexpected circumstances occur and the runner has issues fulfilling the buy. And being from two years ago, they didn't know what we do now. And now we know that working with poly and PVD brass is pretty tough, but disregarding all that stuff, let's concentrate on the keyboard itself. As always, stick the rubber feet on first. I don't know if I mixed them up, but these were too big for the holes on the bottom, so I had to use my own. And it's a bit hard to tell, but you may be able to tell that the case is warped, and we'll see why later. But let's take it apart to have a closer look. There's six hex screws on the bottom, and an additional six which are smaller and are countersunk for the brass weight on the bottom. The weight is made from PVD brass and is one of the problematic parts of the board. One side of it is finished pretty close to perfect, no real blemishes or scratches and it looks so nice as mirror finishes are before the fingerprints come and that's the side that faces down onto the table so it's the visible side. However the other side which you can only see when you open up the keyboard does have those imperfections. But as it is enclosed the finish isn't a huge deal. What is a huge deal though is the warp on this. This is 3mm thick, so the rest of the keyboard conforms to this shape when you screw it in. Here's the CNC polycarbonate parts and is the appeal of the board. Poly is stronger than acrylic and is more flexible. Being plastic, it's very light, but because of its thickness, there's not much flex to it and it feels great. And probably the best part of this specific unit in regards to the quality is the 1.5mm brass plate. The mirror finish is stunning and it's just so nice to look at. It's similar to the situation of the brass weight. One side is pretty much perfect, while the other does have a few imperfections, but as there's less surface area, it's not as noticeable. Plus, it doesn't have the warping issues of the weight. The PCB interestingly supports MX style switches, but also SMK switches. I did a build a while back with SMK whites, which were some really nice clickies. There isn't support for through-hole LEDs for backlighting, however on the bottom we do have RGB SMD LEDs to illuminate the case. And for today's build, we'll be using Milmac sockets, which will make the keyboard hot swappable. These are referred to as pin receptacles, and basically we solder these into the PCB so that the pins can go into these sockets. This drawing shows it pretty well. It's not just the tube where it would have to be a pretty tight friction fit, rather it has these spring-loaded contacts, kind of like the kale sockets, which makes it compatible with most Amex style key switches, if not all. All PCBs are different, but these drop straight in and are quite loose actually, so I had to use tape to make sure they stayed in place. And yeah, you just have to solder them in place.
You'll probably have a few spots where you can't place the socket in the PCB because of multiple layouts. So I just put the socket on the switch first and then put it in place to solder. And there, we've just turned this into a hot swappable PCB. It's pretty cool, but also a bit pricey. To fill up this board, it cost me like 40 bucks-ish AUD, so like 30 USD. Okay, so now to put it back together. I actually spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out a way to work around the warped weight, and after a bit of experimenting, I found the easiest way was just not to fully screw it in. So I left two screws completely out, and two other screws weren't 100% tightened. The weight still holds in just fine and doesn't rattle or move around or anything. Obviously this shouldn't be something you do, but you really couldn't tell that I did this from the outside. This uses a top mount design, so the plate is screwed to the top piece of the case, with the PCB being held by the switches. For the key switches, I lubed some T1s with Tribosis 3203, I think that's how you say it, that I both got from Daily Clack. It's a pretty thin lube as I didn't want to take too much tactility away. While hot swap is cool and all, with the top mount design there's nothing really holding the PCB in place, it's just the key switches. So at the start in particular, every time I put in a key switch it would push the PCB down. You also have to make sure the pins are straight before you put them in, as they're not as forgiving as kale sockets, so you're definitely going to bend a few pins here and there. Since we have the purple poly, which is quite reminiscent of the classic translucent purple Game Boy Pocket, I borrowed GMK DMG from a mate. And thanks again, you will be rewarded. And I know the purple Game Boy didn't use this colour scheme for the buttons, but I think it fits regardless. Well, I've fallen in love with this thing. I've built the Sol 2, which was made from polycarbonate, but this is my first normal poly build, and it just looks so, so nice. We have the purple version. In different lighting and angles, the purple is more dominant, especially in dim lighting. It looks really nice and has a deeper color, but as the plate is brass, it does take away a bit from that purpleness, but at the same time gives this really interesting color scheme. And I mean, purple and yellow or gold is a classic complementary color combo. And that's the cool thing about Polu, it's translucent nature, which can often be related to retro tech. We get to see the insides, the screws, the threads and all that stuff. I personally really like that aesthetic and it's just something different to the standard opaque aluminium. And what do you think of GMK DMG by the way? I think it looks really sweet on this board and just feels right to me. It's a very classy set, without the accent keys it's a very understated colorway, with the legends being a dark blue purple which pretty much looks black in low light, and as the poly is in its nature understated already, it works. The design takes on an Apple M0110 type of look. We have quite thick bezels which slope down with a uniform chamfer which gives a real solid look. Looking at the side profile, it has just a 2.9 degree angle of elevation which is quite low relative to a lot of other boards that hover around the 6 degree mark. Because I'm so used to the norm, it seemed quite flat to me, but more importantly it's quite a high keyboard, especially at the front. In a recent video, I basically ripped into the Keychron K2 for having a high front, and well, yeah, it's not the most comfortable keyboard to use if you're resting your wrists on the table, which regardless of how you type, you will probably do while gaming. So I had to use a wrist rest for this because the angle it created with my wrists was a touch too straining for me. 
The MXSS uses a 65% layout with a blocker in the top right which reveals some sort of grill design for the lighting to shine through. I've always been a fan of 65%, nice compact form factor with most of what I need for primary access. And if we press FN, which I have marked as control, and this key, we can turn on the underglow. There's a bunch of effects and patterns and stuff, but yeah, it actually looks pretty good. The LEDs are downwards facing and are covered by the brass weight, so we don't really get those ugly concentration points that we see on other boards because we don't have that direct side of them. Don't know if it was intentional, but the brass weight works perfectly in reflecting that light, and while the spread isn't uniform or anything, the glow has quite a nice spread and highlights the polycarbonate characteristic of the keyboard. But what I really did enjoy was typing on it. Again we have Lube T1s in here, so these are a medium weight tactile key switch with a bump right at the top which is strong and pronounced. Wonderful key switches to use and are some of the best tactiles you can easily acquire. While the bump is strong, it's nicely rounded and smooth. The legs were factory lubed, but I kinda went over that when I lubed the rest of the switch. The combination of the brass plate, top mount design and the polycarbonate case provided I guess a kind of bassy experience. Like it wasn't as tight or as dense feeling as other high end aluminium boards. There is that slight feel of relief and the bottom out is again slightly softer which I guess makes sense. It's not a bad thing or anything, just different and I do love typing on this. And that's the MXSS. If you've been involved in the bite, it's fair to say that it's been a really long wait and you're gonna have to expect some problems with your board which understandably can be frustrating. I think while this one has issues, in the end it's come together really nicely but apparently it is one of the better ones. And yeah, I think it was just kind of taking on the unknown at the time, it was their first design and sometimes things go wrong. But what I have in front of me is something that still is a unique mechanical keyboard and it's going to be tough to pass it on to its owner. Also, the Sydney Mechanical Keyboard Meetup 2019 is on the 30th of November, so super close now. We'll have a heap of keyboards out, some cool activities, and amazing prizes as well. So check out the link in the description and come along if you can. Mm -hmm.